The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, starring Peter Jones as the book. we find is this, that Ford Prefect and Zephod Bibobrox have broken into an ancient building concerning which they have reached the following conclusion. It's a derelict spaceport. And within which they have discovered a large number of amazing old ships whose condition has been described by Ford Prefect in these terms. Just rust and wreckage. And by Zephod Bibelbrox like this. Just like huge broken eggshells. We find that one ship has caught their eye for this reason. It's covered with muck and dust, but looks like it's still in one piece. Hey, yeah, and, and it's still connected to its supply lines. And we find that this provokes them into closer investigation. This is what they find. Feels like it's on power. Just a very slight vibration. But it must have been here for centuries. Hey, man, pass me those four bits of tubing. What, these? Yeah. I'm gonna make me a stethoscope and take a listen to this baby. There. And there. Like that. You hear anything? Hey, yeah, yeah, I can hear something. What is it? Oh, Ford, I don't believe what I just heard. Here, let me listen. Okay, but you better keep your head screwed on, kid. You can hear? Yeah. It's a voice. But can you hear what it's saying, man? Can you get your mind behind what it's saying? Shh, shh. I'm trying. Delay to this, this flight. Weird. We are currently awaiting the loading of our complement of small lemon soaked paper napkins for your comfort, refreshment, and hygiene during the flight, which will be of two hours' duration. Meanwhile, we thank you for your patience. The cabin crew will shortly be serving coffee and biscuits again. Say, Ford, how long has this ship been standing here? Man, there's a departure board right behind us. I've been looking at the flight schedules. Man, this ship is late. Man, this ship is very, very late. Man, this ship is over 900 years late. Zephod, we got to get in there. But man, can you cope with what we might find? I don't know. We got to get in there. We got to get in there. What we find, we find. What we also find is that Arthur Dent, Marvin, and the girl Lintilla, who, as has already been established, has now been cloned over 578,000 million times, and as that's created a problem in some quarters, are now thoroughly lost in the Dolman Sachs Lil base. This is because there is no light, which is in turn because Marvin has done something aggravating to the Dolman Sachs Lil power supply, which is in turn because he was anxious to create some confusion under cover of which he could rescue Arthur and Lintilla, which was in turn because they had been captured by Hig Hurtenflurst, which was in turn because... and so on back to the initial and highly controversial creation of the universe. Only two of Lintilla's 578,000 million clones are on the planet Brontitol with her. And it is more than likely that we shall also find them. Lintilla! Ah, there's your better half and worse half. Or at least you're exactly the same halves. Thirds, Lintilla! whatever. Why Lintilla! do people leave such complicated what lives? What happened to you? There were a couple of foot warriors standing guard over us. But after a while, they sat guard over us. Then they wandered away to find some corn plasters. And so we escaped. Right, where are we going? How should I know? It's your universe. You go where you like. We'll get back to our ship. I thought you said it didn't work. But there's a derelict spaceport about a mile or so from here. We might be able to get some parts to repair it with. Ah, well, I'm not very skilled at repairing spaceships. Well, you can learn. Take a bit of time, I think. 
You could take some evening classes. What, here? Yes. I've got a bottle of them, little pink ones. Well, I... Come on, then. Let's get out of here before they restore the power and find us. They restored the power. They found us. Keep down. Shooting us won't do you any good. For us, for that matter, for us, for that matter. That's right. Come out. Now. It's a terrible thing to say, but you know what I sometimes think would be useful in these situations? What? A gun of some sort. Will this help? What is it? It's a gun of some sort. Oh, that'll help. Can you make it fire? Uh... Yes. Right. Look, why don't you keep firing at them? I'll make a dash for the next intersection. You throw me the gun, I'll keep firing, and you make a dash for it. Did you ever see gunfight at the OK Corral? What? No, you wouldn't have done. What? Uh, never mind. No, what? No, oh, just an old western. Oh, please, I don't want to talk about it. Right. Everyone understand? Yes. Yes. Marvin? Understand. You ask me if I understand. Yes or no? Guess. Right, I'm going. You fire, I'll run. Now! <laughs> Right. Uh, excuse me. Huh? Who are you? Uh, me? Ah, well, you see, what it is, you see, is I'm Poodoo. And uh, look, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are you busy? What? Yes. Uh, can I just ask you something? No. In a minute. Please get back. Right. Lintella. Only I can see you're busy, so I won't take up a moment of your time. If I could just... What? Introduce a couple of friends of mine. Well, three, actually. Four if you count the priest. Hello. 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 Ah. Only we were wondering... Who are you? Can I just ask you something? Look, please. It's just, do you know those girls over there? What? Yes. Oh, that's good. Thank you very much. That's all I wanted. That's all. Thanks. Good. Lintilla, throw the gun! Only what I ask, you see, is, and uh, seeing as you're busy, I'll just be very brief. Did I introduce my friends? Yes. I'm sure they'd like to introduce themselves. Hello, I'm a litnil. So am I. Me too. Go away! And this is Fart Far the Priest. Farn Var. Farm Far. He's a priest, you see. He does marriages and other things, but mostly marriages. Only shut up! We were wondering if you could introduce a litnil. Who? A litnil. And a litnil and a litnil to the girls, your lady friends. Lintilla! Yes, that's right. Just socially, you see. All very pleasant. Throw the gun! We've brought some drinks. We can just have a quiet social get-together. And some music, of course. Got to have some music. Here we go. Throw the gun! Stop it! Stop it! Now, when I start firing, run! Then, if it all goes very well, you see, we've got a priest on hand in case anybody wants to get married at all, just to round off the evening. Are you totally mad? No, no, they're not married yet. Oh, did you say mad? Yes. Oh, no, well, I don't think so. I thought you said married. Of course, they would be mad talking about marrying these girls if they were married already. Well, they could talk about it, of course, but somebody else would have to actually do it. Anyway. Shut up. Right, oh, Squire. Ah! They're quite keen to get married, though, aren't you? Yes. Oh, yes. Very much so. Where did you nutters come from? Run! Oh, what we did, you see, is we flew in. We flew in, you see. Oh, yes, we definitely flew in. Well, bloody fly out again. Oh. Lentilla! 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 Are you all right? Yes, yes, yes. Hello, ladies. Marvin? Never better. Good. Still very bad, though. Right. All you Lintillas, can you start firing again while I run the next bit? <gasps> Lintilla? <laughs> What's going on? Hello. Hello. I think the lads and lasses are just getting acquainted. I'd leave them to it if I were you. What? Look, we're trying to escape from the foot warriors. Can we have parties later? Oh, we can't believe. These are the most attractive men we've ever met. Are oh, they? Oh, all my life God. I've longed oh, for such God. a moment. Oh, touching, isn't it? Look, what the hell is going on here? Oh, just happiness, Squire. Only it's nice to bring a little happiness into life, don't you think? Yes, but there's a time and place for everything. Oh. 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 Well, I'll just get on with the shooting oh. and saving everybody's lives then, shall I? No kissing now, lovebirds. Very old-fashioned <laughs> sector of the galaxy. This no kissing allowed without names firmly on marriage certificates. Oh. Looks like a cue for action from you then, doesn't it, Padre? And I just happen to have the warrants for your marriage... Sorry, licences about my person. Mad. Totally bonkers. And then, as soon as you're all happily conjoined, you can get on with escaping and everything, knowing that you have the love, support and trust of your chosen partners. Nice, isn't it? Now, who's going to marry who? Listen, you foot warriors! Can you hold hard a bit with the firing? I've just got three impromptu weddings breaking out behind me. What? Weddings! You know, the, with this ring I thee wed, and that sort of thing. Did you say weddings? Yes! Can... can we come? No! Stay back! 
Dearly beloved, we are glad... Yeah, 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 we'll uh, skip all that. Let's just get straight on with the signing and the pronouncement, shall we? Let's all go mad, shall we? Now, what you all do, you see, is you sign here. That's right. Look, let's change the music. Something a bit special for you. Keep back! That's good. Name there, that's very good. Right, Padre? I now pronounce you men and wives. Men, you can kiss your brides. <laughs> Nerve-wrackingly enough, the moment at which two lintillas and two alitnils unexpectedly vanish in what can only be described as a puff of unsmoke, coming as it does only seconds before Arthur discovers that Poodoo's alleged marriage licenses are not what they purport to be, but are, in fact, agreements to cease to be drawn up by the cloning machine company's lawyers, is also the moment at which it becomes necessary to consider new developments in the Ford Prefect Zephard Bibelbrock situation. Having gained access to the ship, they prepare to enter the passenger compartments. This is what they find. Passengers? Yeah. But alive? Sleeping. For all these years? Suspended animation. And the voice we heard? Android stewardess. Look, here she comes now. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for bearing with us during this slight delay. We will be taking off as soon as we possibly can. If you would like to wake up now, I will serve you coffee and biscuits. Wake up now. Run, man! I What gives, man? What gives, what gives, what gives? What gives? I mean, they woke up. They, they all woke up. I was, I've never... I, they Passengers wo- are not allowed on the flight deck. Please return to your seats and wait for the ship to take off. Coffee and biscuits are being served. This is your autopilot speaking. Please return to your seats. Go back in there. We're not passengers. Please return to your seats. No, we're not passengers. Please return to your seats. We're not... Hello? Can you hear me? What's happening on this hell ship? There has been a delay. The passengers are kept in temporary suspended animation for their comfort and convenience. Coffee and biscuits are served every ten years after which passengers are returned to suspended animation for their comfort and convenience. Departure will take place when flight stores are complete. We apologize for the delay. Delay? Have you seen the world outside this ship? It's a wasteland, a desert. Civilization's been and gone. It's over. There are no lemon-soaked paper napkins on the way from anywhere. The statistical likelihood is that other civilizations will arise. There will one day be lemon-soaked paper napkins. Till then, there will be a short delay. Please return to your seats. We are not... Please return to your seats. Return to your seats. Come on, let's get out of here. Return to your seats. This way. Return to your seats. Why? First class. Come on. Return to your seats. 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 Return for your seat, return for your seat, your seat, return for 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 your That is precisely what the narrative will now do. Lentilla, are you all right? I think so. Just shattered and drained. Marvin's got Poodoo and the priest under control. They're, um... They're from the cloning machine company, I know. Marvin's tied them up. He's put a cassette of his autobiography in their tape machine and left it running. So I think it's all up with them. I didn't ask to be made. No one consulted me or considered my feelings in the matter. (laughs) I don't think it even occurred to me that I might have feelings. After I was made, I was left in a dark room for six months, and me with this terrible pain in all the diodes down my left side. I called for succor in my loneliness, but did anyone come? Did they help? My first and only true friend 
was a small rat. One day, it crawled into a cavity in my right ankle and died. I have a horrible feeling it's still there. As for the third Alec Mill, well, it's the only time I've ever killed a man in cold blood, and I, I don't feel awfully... He wasn't a real man. He was an anti-clone. There must be millions of them now roaming the galaxy, wiping out my sisters. What's happened to the foot warriors? Oh, the flying chiropodist arrived. They all went off to have a word with him. Are you fit? Yes, I'm fine. Really, I am. Come on, we must get to the spaceport. Coming, Marvin? I suppose so. There it is. Just a mile away. Nice clear day for a brisk walk. See that uh, huge form over there in the distance? Yes. Fifteen mile high statue of uh, me throwing a cup. Not often one comes across that sort of thing. Up there, you see, is the cup itself. Apparently it's held there by art. Wonderful, isn't it? Just a pity our ship's parked in it. Arthur, look, it's coming down. What? God, so it is. The cup's coming down. No, it isn't. The ground's going up. The sky's moving sideways. It's folding up. What's happening? But there aren't any real people here at all. Not one of you. Share and enjoy. Share and enjoy. Well, well, well. How have you got here? What we did, you see, is we flew in. We flew in, you see. Oh, it's really, we definitely flew in. Here's to your achievements, eh, from people, Brox? Achievements? Yeah. Oh, dear. I think you'll find reality is on the blink again. And this is indeed what we find. For deep in the heart of the first-class passenger section of the slightly delayed Transtellar Space Lines ship, the following horrifying events have been taking place. Can I get you a drink? Um... Sani Whoop? The same. I, I think... But, but who are you, man? Why do I want to see you? I was told you were on an intergalactic cruise, which I can handle, but in your office, which I can't. But I assure you, it is true. In what? I, I wonder if... What do you want, Ford? I, 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 a small jank spirit, if there is one. Get the man a drink, Zani Whoop. Or, or indeed a large one. And one for me. Uh, two for me. There's nothing worse than having only one drunk head. Well, here's to your achievements, eh, for Beeblebrox? Achievement? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What achievement? Oh, I don't know. I achieved so many things, you know. You have the heart of gold. You have brought it here. Uh, yeah. Into my universe. Yeah. Uh, what? This universe. I created it in my office. You've been in it for quite a while now. Huh? Is it all right if I just go and sit in this corner and get drunk? I may sing quietly if that doesn't disturb you. It's just been... Well, you know how it is. You mean... We're in an artificial universe. Oh, yes. All that out there? Yes. Like uh, in your office? Yes. Oh, man, I've heard of open plan, but... It's modelled very closely on the real one, you know? There's just a few differences. But when do we get into it, man? I mean, like, uh, where, when? You didn't notice. Well, I'll let you work it out for yourself. Now you've brought me the ship, we can dismantle this universe, return to the real one, and find what we're after. Can I just ask you some questions? By all means. OK. Well, for starters, I'll have who, what, when, and where, and then whither, whether, whence, and wherefore to follow, and one big side order of why. And the wine list, please. It's terribly simple. Long ago, you and I and others planned to discover who it was who was ruling the galaxy, who was making all the decisions behind the president's back. I found where he was located, and retreated to the safe hiding of the bar in the first-class lounge Ooh, of a forgotten spaceship in a... Well, can we stop that man singing? Hey, Ford! Yeah, I'll sing something else. In an artificial universe. Oh, Meanwhile, you were doing the most important job. You stole the infinite improbability drive ship, without which it would be impossible to breach the barriers protecting his world. And then you brought it to my hiding place. Ford! Oh, yeah? You're still singing. Am I? Mm. Oh, I, I, oh, yes, I am. What's the matter? You don't like it? I'll sing something different. Well, oh, won't you I'll, I'll just bring your ship down. You then we can get out of here and get on with it. Oh, dang spirit. The major problem, one of the major problems, for there are several, one of the many major problems with governing people is that of who you get to do it or rather of who manages to get people to let them do it to them. To summarize, it is a well-known and much lamented fact that those people who most want to rule people are, ipso facto, those least suited to do it. To summarize the summary, anyone who is capable of getting themselves made president should on no account be allowed to do the job. To summarize the summary of the summary, people are a problem. 
And so this is the situation we find. A succession of galactic presidents who so much enjoy the fun and palaver of being in power that they never really notice that they're not. And somewhere in the shadows behind them, who? Who can possibly rule if no one who wants to can be allowed to? Pussy! Pussy, pussy! Coochie, 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 coochie! Pussy want his fish. Nice piece of fish. Pussy want it. Pussy not eat his fish. Pussy get thin and waste away, I think. I imagine this is what will happen, but how can I tell? I think it's better if I don't get involved. I think fish is nice, but then I think that rain is wet, so who am I to judge? Ah, you're eating it. Fish come from far away, or so I'm told, or so I imagine I'm told. When the men come, or when in my mind the men come in their six black shiny ships, do they come in your mind too? What do you see, pussy? And when I hear their questions, all their many questions, do you hear questions? Perhaps you just think they're singing songs to you. Perhaps they are singing songs to you, and I just think they're asking me questions. Do you think they came today? I do. There's mud on the floor, cigarettes and whiskey on my table, fish in your plate and a memory of them in my mind. And look what else they've left me. Crosswords, dictionaries and a calculator. I think I must be right in thinking they ask me questions. To come all that way and leave all these things just for the privilege of singing songs to you would be very strange behaviour. Or so it seems to me. Who can tell? Who can tell? I think I saw another ship in the sky today, a big white one. I've never seen a big white one, only six small black ones. Perhaps six small black ones can look like one big white one. Perhaps I'd like a glass of whiskey. Yes, that seems more likely. Perhaps some different people are coming to see me. Yeah, yes. What, that shack? Yes. Weird. But it's the middle of nowhere. Oh, come on. We must have come to the wrong place. Knock on the door. Hello? Uh, excuse me. Do you rule the universe? I try not to. Are you wet? Wet? Well, doesn't it look as if we're wet? That's how it looks to me, but how you feel about it might be a different matter. If you find warmth makes you feel dry, you'd better come in. Uh, sure. Oh, oh that's fine. Right. Thank, Thank you. Very sure. kind. Sure. 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 What, <laughs> <laughs> man, like, like uh, man, what's your name? I don't know. Why, do you think I ought to have one? It seems odd to give a bundle of vague sensory perceptions a name. Listen, we must ask you some questions. All right. You can sing to my cat if you like. Would he like that? You'd better ask him that. How long have you been ruling the universe? Ah, this is a question about the past, is it? Yes. How can I tell that the past isn't a fiction designed to account for the discrepancy between my immediate physical sensations and my state of mind? Do you answer all questions like this? I say what it occurs to me to say when I think I hear people say things more I cannot say. Oh, that clears it up. He's a weirdo. No, listen. People come to you, yes? I think so. And they ask you to take decisions about wars, about economies, about people, about everything going on out there in the universe. I only decide about my universe. My universe is what happens to my eyes and ears. Anything else is surmise and hearsay. For all I know, these people may not exist. You may not exist. I say what it occurs to me to say. But don't you see? What you decide affects the fate of millions of people. I don't know them. I've never met them. They only exist in words I think I hear. The men who come to me say, so-and-so wants to declare what we call a war. These are the facts. What do you think? And I say... Sometimes it's a smaller thing. They might say, for instance, that a man called Zaphod Beeblebrox is president, but he is in financial collusion with a consortium of high-powered psychiatrists who want him to order the destruction of a planet called Earth because of some sort of experiment. Um, Should he be allowed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Now, wait a minute, man. Uh, Sit down, Arthur, sit down. Let go of me. Oh, Arthur, you know me. What are you? We'll sort it out later. But it's folly to say you know what is happening to other people. Only they know, if they exist. Do you think they do? I have no opinion. How can I have? Ford, the Earthman, do you think he's... 
No, but that's not it, you know. That's not it at all, man. Look, but don't you see that people live or die on your word? It's nothing to do with me. I am not involved with people. The Lord knows I am not a cruel man. Uh, you say the Lord. So you believe in... My cat. I call him the Lord. I am kind to him. All right. How do you know he exists? How do you know he knows you to be kind or enjoys what you think of as your kindness? I don't. I have no idea. It merely pleases me to behave in a certain way to what appears to be a cat. What else do you do? Please, I am tired. What was that? I don't know, man. But I didn't like the sound of it. Let's get after the Earth Man. Uh, look, sorry to rush, Great Ruler. Keep up the disinterested work, right? See you around. No, wait! There is so much we must discover. Yeah, later, later. Arthur! Arthur! He's gone. Holy Belgium, man! So is the swatting ship! Was all that true? Oh, what is truth, man? You heard the weirdo? Fine. Zephyr, whatever may or may not happen from here on in, I just want you to know something. Yeah. I want you to know that I respect you. Great. Just not very much, that's all. What does the future hold for our heroes now? What does the past or present hold for that matter? Will Arthur Dent now embark on a terrible and protracted vendetta against Zephod Beeblebrox? Will he be all right, alone in the universe with only the infinite improbability drive ship, Marvin the paranoid android, Lintilla the archaeologist, Eddie the shipboard computer, a lot of chatty doors, and a battered copy of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for company? Who will Ford Prefect ally himself with? Arthur Dent, Zephod Beeblebrox, or a large pan-galactic gargle blaster? Will there ever be another series of that wholly remarkable and mystifying entity, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Find out if you can. In that, the final episode of this series of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Peter Jones was the book, Simon Jones was Arthur Dent, Geoffrey McGiven was Ford Prefect and the Priest, Mark Wing Davy was Zaphod Beeblebrox, Stephen Moore was Marvin and the Man in the Shack, David Tate was Eddie and the Arlitnils, Rula Lenska was the Lintillas and the Stewardess, Ken Campbell was Poodoo, and Jonathan Price was Zani Whoop and the Autopilot. Radiophonic sound and music was by Paddy Kingsland of the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. Technical presentation throughout the series was by Alec Hale Munro, Lisa Braun, and Colin Duff. The programme was written by Douglas Adams, produced by Geoffrey Perkins, and was made with the assistance of a digital writing system.